wanted to uh, tell you a few things about me and uh, my testimony, some of the things that I've been through because I think that um, people get the impression that if you are a certain way now, that is how you always were and that, you know, change is not possible. But um, I'm only doing this in an effort to help someone, um, if someone can be helped by it, just to tell you some of the things that um, I have been through and that have influenced my life and made me who I am. Well, um, to put it mildly, <laughs> um, when I was a teenager, uh, I was a total and complete fuck up, okay? Um, I did not feel as if school had anything to keep my interest and so I was skipping, I was uh, out getting high, I was drinking. Um, it was just, you know, it was a whole lot going on and I was into all of it, okay? I, I grew up when um, crack first hit the streets, so there was a lot of stuff going on out here um, in these streets. I was born and raised in Detroit, so there was quite a bit for me to get into and I got into it. Now, I've never smoked crack, but... Um, on the end of it, there were a few things that I uh, did, and uh, some of my friends were into, which led to a different sort of lifestyle. But um, when I was 16, I basically I dropped out of school. Yeah, me, Miss College Degree, I dropped out. Um, I never finished high school. Okay. Um, I was out there. I did whatever. But at the same time, I had enough good common sense to be trying to do something. Um, with myself, sort of, you know, I went and got a little job at the mall, thought I was doing something, my mother thought I was going to school every day, but I was working, okay, <laughs> I got busted when one day on uh, my mom's lunch break, she walked past the store in the mall and was like, uh, wait a minute, so she came in there and was like, uh, I'll see you when you get home from work. And, of course, I got on the phone, called all my friends. Can I come to your house? Can I lay at your crib? My mom going to kill me. Everybody was like, hell no, we ain't, uh -uh, no, we ain't dealing with you and your mama. So I was out there and uh, <clears throat> come to find out um, at that time when I got busted, I was also pregnant. So, boom, boom, you know, you in trouble, okay? <laughs> I was in some big trouble. So um, I decided to keep my baby, my daughter, and um, I was pregnant all throughout my most of my 17-year-old uh, uh, year, um, and I went to a pregnant girl school for a minute, and that didn't work out. Plus, I got sick, so I just didn't um, complete school or whatever, um, had my daughter. So I decided that I had to go and do something in order to help feed her, all right? I, was, I got on welfare. That's what people did, so I could feed her, have food stamps, all of that, um, and... Then subsequently, like a couple of years after that, I was working at a little job, you know, making minimum wage or whatever, and um, I ended up getting married, and I moved to California with my husband then, who was a Marine. And um, it was only after my relationship didn't work out with my husband that I realized that I had to change some things. Okay, um, before I married him, I did go and I did get my GED, but that was the extent of it. Um, now, here's the interesting thing about the GED, and this told me something about myself that I wasn't, that I tried my best to hide and to bury because being a smart kid never got you anything around here in the hood, you know, except for ridicule, laughed at, dissed, whatever. So, of course, I tried to fit in with, with my peer group, so I wasn't trying to, you know, show everyone that I was as smart as I was um, but when I took my GED I did not get one question on the whole test wrong and because of that now I didn't even know this was the case because of that colleges began to send me um, offers to come to their school and I was like what this is a GED test you know it's not like I took the ACT or anything or submitted these things um, to any college. I started getting offers in the mail and I was like, hmm, that's that's interesting. But anyway, um, after I broke up with my husband, all I had was a baby, a bad marriage, a GED, and an attitude problem. That's what I had. So I had to sit down and I had to reassess what I had done with my life and what, 
it was that I planned on doing with the rest of my life, okay? And, you know, for my daughter's sake, um, not so much my own, then I tried to look into some of those colleges or whatever, and I decided, okay, I'll go back to school, I was eligible for a Pell Grant, okay, let's go. But when I got there, something happened. I started to like it. Now, this wasn't for anything else. Of course, people dog me out. My family, you ain't never gonna be shit. You're gonna be a statistic. You got one baby. They're waiting for me to get pregnant again and have another one. Um, all kinds of ridicule, all types of bashing. But, you know, my attitude then was, I don't care. Whatever. You know, whatever y'all say it doesn't matter to me. I'm still sort of that way now. But, you know, <laughs> with the younger person's attitude on top of it, it was real ugly. So, um... I, I started going to school and I started to discover about myself that I was capable okay and that I was shortchanging myself from a life that I could have because I was stubborn willful stupid didn't want to listen to anyone just rebellious okay in, in complete and full and total but my daughter did not deserve that rebellion she needed something more I could not just tell her to do something while raising her if I wasn't trying to live that myself so I went to school and I started doing well and I started doing extremely well and I started to get offers to join certain groups or whatever in which I did and I ended up being student council president I ended up being um, Phi Theta Kappa president I ended up being um, the Michigan State representative for the Michigan Honors Association and I'm like wait a minute you go from big dummy dropout to this 